Are religious beliefs claims and require support, or do they get immunity from intellectual rigor? Find out next. Today, I had a debate of sorts with two theists on a Facebook group where it was claimed that the religious had absolutely no burden of proof to fulfill because they were just relating beliefs, they weren't making any claims that what they believed was actually true. And when I disagreed with the entire premise, I got dogpiled by two people whose only argument seemed to be, nuh -uh. But I remain convinced that anyone who makes a public statement about objective reality, no matter how they phrase it, ought to be held accountable for their argument, whether they want to be or not. So let's take a look at this, shall we? So, as I said, this morning I came across a post on Facebook in a group that, honestly, I wasn't that impressed with in the first place because the rules were very accommodationist in nature and you really weren't allowed to make anyone feel bad for the absurd things that they believed because... Feelings! Sorry, rational debate doesn't hold back because it might make someone on the other side unhappy. So I hardly even paid attention to what went on there and should have left the group a long time ago, but this morning a post popped up and said that the religious had absolutely no requirement to back up anything that they believed, nor could they really even be questioned on what they believed, because beliefs are not claims, they're beliefs. And I pointed out that there's no functional difference between the two. If you believe that the earth is flat and you relate that belief in public, then you're inherently making a claim that the earth is flat because no one believes anything which they are not convinced is factually true. I don't think it's even possible in a healthy mind to believe something that you know for a fact is wrong. Therefore, saying I believe X is functionally identical to I claim X, and you should have to back it up. Now, this doesn't go for mere subjective opinions. You can say my favorite flavor of ice cream is chocolate and not have to provide evidence that it's true, because in the scheme of things, it just doesn't matter. This is not a belief about the fundamental structure of reality, after all, so expecting them to prove that they are correct is a waste of time. But if you're making a claim or holding a belief that something is factually true in objective reality, then you'd better be prepared to back it up or you can and you will and you should expect to be taken to task for your failure. But no, these two wouldn't have any of that. They wanted the religious and indeed every irrational person on the planet to get off scot-free Mostly, I suspect, because they know the religious are on such intellectually tenuous footing already that they wanted to give them an inherent out. But I pointed out that if this line of reasoning were expanded, it would utterly destroy even the possibility of rational debate everywhere. Flat earthers could just reframe their claims as beliefs and would face no criticism. Creationists could just say, well, it's our belief and nobody could say a mean word to them and their utterly irrational and unsupported position. Alien abductions? Perfectly fine, because it's just a belief and they don't have to prove anything that they say is true. And that means Bigfoot believers can't be attacked. And that means end times theorists have nothing to present. And solipsists? Well, it's just a belief. They don't have to have credible evidence or rational arguments. The whole thing is utterly silly. In fact, if you take this to the extreme, it destroys all of scientific inquiry and peer review, because nobody has to prove that what they're saying is true, that it is supported by objective evidence, or that it makes any testable predictions. Nope, it's just a belief. We don't have to accept that gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. It can be anything, and so long as you believe it, your beliefs are all it takes. Intellectual discourse gets flushed down the toilet, and our technological advancement dies. But of course, these two, what I assume were theists, they weren't having any of that. They even agreed with me, but their defense of religious absurdity was so strong 
that it didn't matter to them at all. Beliefs are not claims. They do not make arguments. They have no burden of proof whatsoever. Anyone can believe any crazy nonsense they want, and everyone has to respect their right not to actually show that they are correct. I call bullshit. I'm sorry, I will never agree with that. Not just because of the consequences when taken to the extremes, but because it doesn't get us anywhere. It effectively says that nobody has to prove anything just because of how they're phrasing what they're saying. And we all know why they're doing this. Because they've got nothing to present. They know it, and they don't want to be made fun of for being so intellectually vapid. It's an emotional defense system, not an intellectually valid argument. It's spin, spin, spin because it protects their emotionally comforting beliefs from being intellectually shredded. And they even tried the dictionary trick where they presented a definition for belief that said an acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists. And I pointed out that means the individual's belief is actually an acceptance that a proposition is factually correct, a claim, if you will, and they wouldn't hear it. Because this isn't about discovering the truth of any rational proposition, it's about keeping them emotionally unstable from facing the reality of their instability. And at this point, I excused myself from the discussion, dropped out of the group like I should have done before, and went on my merry way, all the while being hounded by these two idiots until I blocked them. And these are the first two people I have ever blocked on Facebook. But they were irrational on their face, unable to intellectually debate the point, and certainly emotionally committed to protecting the religious from having to do anything but make their unsupported statements that felt good just because they felt good. But this is the kind of thinking, if you want to call it that, that you find among the religious and the accommodationist crowd all the time. It is never about truth. It's about feelings. They don't care about facts. They care about emotions. So the religious get special dispensation because to do otherwise just might hurt their precious widow fee-fees. Yeah, that's not how this works, no matter how distraught they might get over reality. People need to be held accountable. If they don't want their beliefs to be on the intellectual chopping block, then they need to keep them to themselves or only share them with the likewise religiously delusional. Because the second they take those beliefs out into a public space and shake them around, they're open to every bit of intellectual criticism that we can muster. And the same goes for anti-vaxxers. The same goes for the laughably intelligent design proponents. The same goes for people who believe in the Loch Ness Monster or any other absurd, unsupported thing. We don't have to care about your feelings. We have to care about your facts. And whether they like it or not, they have none. Just trying to pretend that they're special doesn't change anything. They're special, all right, but not in a good way. 